You know, I woke up this morning and I said, today is finally the day. It's Tet Day. So today we're going to be making carbon tetrachloride. It's a highly toxic compound that consists of one carbon and four chlorine molecules. Uh, what we're going to be doing basically is taking some bleach, just common household bleach from the store, and some acetone, and forming the uh, chloroform down in there. Uh, at the bottom, it's going to float to the bottom, we'll decant off the top. Uh, we'll take the chloroform and shake it with some calcium chloride. Uh, I'm not going to distill it there. You normally would if you were making just chloroform. Uh, but since we're going to separate out our carbon tetrachloride at the end anyway, I'm just going to shake it with some calcium chloride and call it good. Uh, and then we're going to get to test out the flow reactor and we're going to do a photochlorination. So we're going to be taking chlorine gas, uh, generating that, and bubbling it through our solution of chloroform under UV light. Uh, commonly, the uh, carbon tetrachloride uh, synthesis here is, is best at a slightly higher wavelength than what we have. Uh, our flow reactor is obviously built specifically for cubane. So we have uh, 310 as our main. Uh, I also have 254, uh, 365, and 395 available. However, the the main power is under the 310 spectrum. I have five of those LEDs in that box, whereas with the other wavelengths, I only have one. Uh, the other wavelengths are just for TLC viewing. Uh, so we're just going to try it with 310, uh, see if that works. Um, and that that's basically it. Uh, it's, it should go without saying that this is highly dangerous. Uh, carbon tetrachloride is toxic, extremely toxic. Uh, it's carcinogen. It can cause liver failure, coma, death, uh, all of the above. Uh, chloroform speaks for itself. Uh, not exactly safe. Uh, bleach, you know, it's a common household material, but it's, it's not exactly the safest thing in the world either. Um, and, you know, we're going to be using acetone too, which commonly uh, people who are working with it in industrial settings use full face respirators for. Uh, and then to top that all off, we're going to be generating chlorine gas, uh, which was used in World War II. So it should go without saying that this is a extremely dangerous procedure. And I would encourage anyone to, uh, you know, just go with this video and let's explore the science together within this video uh, and please don't recreate this video. Uh, if, if you happen to do that, uh, I'm not responsible for anything that you may get yourself into. So with that little warning, obviously I can't control what you do. Uh, you're on your own if you do happen to do this. With that, let's get into it. Alright, welcome to the government watch list. I'm glad you're here. And we're going to need to make some chloroform to make carbon tetrachloride. So what I'm going to do first here is I need to pour out an amount of bleach to make room for our acetone. We're just going to be using bleach and acetone here. Get this uncapped, fresh bottle of bleach. Something that's very important about this is that the bleach is below zero degrees. This is a very exothermic reaction. And that's all right. I have to be insanely accurate, but uh, accurate enough. Okay. So we've got space now. I'm gonna put this back here. What we're going to do pour out our acetone, enough to make a mixture with 5% excess sodium hypochlorite. We do not want this acetone to remain in solution when we're done. Reason being, if we have the acetone remaining, it will form an azeotrope with the chloroform. When we go to distill it, it will be extremely difficult to separate. So we don't want that. So 
10% uh, excess is a little bit much. 5% uh, should be fine. You need to do calculations based on the concentration of your bleach and obviously your amount of bleach to figure out how much acetone you need. In my case, I need 110 milliliters. Oh yeah, she's nice and hot up on the top here. All right, so we have our acetone out. Going to need to very carefully, without allowing too much pressure to build up, mix this up. Go ahead and give that a couple of minutes, mix it a few more times, and then the fun part. We wait overnight. Okay, so it's been a long while since we recorded, so let's catch up. So once chloroform settled in the bottom of the bottle, I just decanted off the stuff on the top, and the chloroform was sitting nicely at the bottom. Uh, I just poured that into a separatory funnel and shook it with uh, calcium chloride. Now you'd want to distill it if that's where you want to stop uh, to get your chloroform, but obviously we're not stopping there and uh, we're already going to distill off our carbon tetrachloride. So now uh, we have the fun portion. So we are going to do a photochlorination here with our photo box, uh, photoreactor, flow reactor thing brought to you by Ligma, of course. Um, so quick rundown again. Uh, so AC power coming in, this is a 12 volt DC converter, 12 volt bus, cooling back there with Peltier modules. Then we've got our uh, variable voltage bus up here, uh, controlled by a butt converter back there. We have temperature control. We have uh, 254, 310, which this photoreactor was made for Cubane, so I had to make some adjustments a little bit to do this because 310 is our, our bulk uh, for cubane and this is 365 which is going to help us out with carbon tetrachloride so uh, I've wired that up to work. Uh, this LED, I'm still working on the door <laughs> so this LED I just kind of threw that there because it's not on the door yet. Uh, I'm just having some trouble with my little plastic hinges <laughs> so I just threw that there uh, because our reaction vessel is over here. So we have a uh, inlet and an outlet, you know, going back to the same flask for our uh, flow operation. We have FEP tubing in here, so it will flow around. There is a LED on each wall, except for the door, obviously, so there's two over there, uh, and the ceiling. So, We've got our inlet over here, which I'll attach a tube to, and our outlet over here, uh, and we're going to be scrubbing over there. And it's important to note that we're doing this under very good ventilation because we are going to be generating chlorine gas. So without anything else, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so since this is going to be closed with the door, I have a ring camera there to uh, monitor our reaction, and that's why there's an LED light back there so our camera can see. So, uh, with that, let's turn it on and, and uh, get the flow reactor started up, and then we'll start we'll start doing it, and we'll see we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Okay, so things happened. <coughs> um, we didn't even get started yet. So the chloroform uh, got very angry at the material that I used for uh, the tube going down in uh, to deliver the chlorine, and it melted it. So now we're using uh, uh, what is it, TPU tubing to go down and deliver the chlorine and I'm using FDP to go out to the scrub. Uh, what else? This, there was sealant on there. Uh, it's called magic tape. Uh, chloroform also ate that and clogged up the pump. So I'm glad that, that happened because we do need this reliable and working for tubing. That's the main purpose. So I'm going to work on the connections from my FEP tubing uh, to my solar ports. Uh, but for now, we're just going to try it uh, as a regular reaction, uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, we are running. If the door is closed as possible, have a live feed down here. Let me know what's going on. Everything is good. Had to get rid of the scrubber, go directly just to the fan. That's alright. Uh, yeah, it's going to work. The gas looks a little bit wet. I'm a little bit concerned about that. But we'll, uh, we'll see how she goes. Okay, so we are currently at a beautiful gorgeous yellow color in there. I've been running this with my 310s this whole time. Uh, I have, so since I have five of those in the box. All right, day two here with a fractional distillation. We have an insulated big row column over there. I have an, a uh, sideways Allen condenser because I broke my uh, Liebig condenser, so we'll try that. We have a beaker going into an ice bath. We have uh, very cold water going into the condenser, and uh, we have a NaOH scrubber. So, uh, and obviously you can see there's a need for investment in lab jacks. So we will make those investments, uh, but for today we'll see what happens. Alright, that was uh, quite a mess, but to my surprise, we're actually somewhat successful. We had a 20% conversion, which is not good considering you can get 99% uh, in this procedure. However, we went into it with the intention of using our flow reactor, uh, but I uh, foolishly used the wrong materials and melted those materials with the chloroform. So I just went ahead with the FEP tubing and went in the liquid phase mostly, which is not as efficient as a gas phase, but I just was not set up to do photolysis in the gas phase with my photoreactor since it's built for cubane. It's, you know, it's not built for this. So I decided to go forward with it uh, just to see if we could do it with the LEDs. No one on YouTube as of yet or published in literature has tried this reaction with LEDs as opposed to mercury vapor or some other source of UV. Uh, so we were successful in that. Uh, we did actually get conversion. So the, the main purpose of doing what I've done today is not for carbon tetrachloride. Uh, it's, it's toxic. I, I don't want a lot of it. It was more of a proof of concept. I don't have a lot of use for it. Either way, uh, there are plenty of great substitutes out there. If you ever come across a reaction that needs carbon tetrachloride, you can use DCM or something else. Uh, quite usually, there's I can't think of a situation where it's it's mandatory that it's carbon tetrachloride. Uh, however, we just wanted to make sure that 
uh, at least I, I would have loved to have made sure that the flow reactor was working properly, but we know now that the photolysis uh, portion of our reactor is working, so we are converting things. We do have enough uh, radiance uh, out of our LEDs to convert things, so this is looking really good for our cubane synthesis. Uh, just a quick update there. I took a few back steps in my cubane synthesis and was starting uh, pretty much from scratch again. Uh, I don't have any more cyclopentanone. I'm making some more of that tonight. Uh, I discovered that on Amazon you can buy PTSA. So I actually bought some and I'm going to reflux that for 30 full hours and you know, that's going to be dreadful, but uh, so we'll go ahead and vacuum distill that at a very static atmosphere to be very careful about our ketal uh, because that's pretty much our starting material for the synthesis. So when we go into brominate, everything's good. The uh, biggest thing is I'm doing a full deprotection and for that step I'm using sulfuric acid. Uh, if there are organics or impurities, in the uh, product at that time, the sulfuric acid will tar that. So it's extremely unforgiving. Uh, I know I haven't set out a video of the deprotection yet, uh, but that's basically what has happened. I, I've tried the deprotection and uh, the product's just not pure enough. You know, we're getting to that step, but we need to be more pure to make it past that without uh, tar. So that'll be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I launched a new Patreon account. Uh, if you'd like to head over there and support all of the research that I'm doing right now, since I'm a smaller channel, uh, pretty much all of the updates over there are uh, available to the public. You don't have to be signed up for Patreon to see what I'm doing uh, in between my videos, because I know there's some gaps here. Uh, so I do try to provide updates there. Uh, the the only thing that's uh, exclusive to Patreons right now is what am I doing in the future uh, and the ability to vote on that content as well. So I hope you go and visit that page and take a look. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to follow along and we'll see you guys later.